Ah, uh, no, you only do it because you love me, right? Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we have a full packed room, which is great. Uh, my name is Denise Orndorf, and I'm from Shenandoah County. I'm a TRC at the elementary level, and I've been in education for 18 years. I've taught kindergarten, second and third, and in the computer lab before I went over to the technology resource coach position. So. I'm Cassie. I was also a special education teacher for 16 plus years. I've also worked for PBS as an um, education specialist for a few years. And um, I'm Valerie Foley. Um, I'm the newbie considering. I've taught for eight years, most of it in second grade, and then I went to the technology lab like Denise and then became an ITRC for our county. Um, we are all based at elementary schools. Our ITRCs are based in one building, which is kind of nice. And this is cracking the code. Um, coding's become a big buzzword, and we're not really sure. How many of you have tried your hand at coding? You've done it with a few kids? Okay, it's about half and half. Um, we started about last year at my school. I teach a school of 1,200 students, K-5, and um, the Hour of Code came about. And so we decided, and I got permission from my admin because it was a little bit outside my realm, to try some coding. And we did it because of the soft skills. You know, there's a ton of creativity that kids can do. They have to problem solve. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never done it before. I'd never tried it before. I heard about it on Twitter and I jumped in head first. So a lot of times they'd have to teach me. We would be in the middle of a problem and I'd say, I don't know how to do this. Who has solved level 11? or who knows how to make your character talk on scratch. And another kid would have to raise their hand and help me. Um, there's a lot of logic into it, a lot of reasoning, and it also challenges <coughs> the kids. I find that with my coding group, just, I get two types of kids. I get the kids who have my little redhead on top. He's never been challenged at school. He goes through, he gets A's, he's fine. And then I get the blonde, who doesn't succeed at school. He's not doing well, but he comes in and he's successful at this. This is something that makes sense to him. And so th those are the reasons I really pushed to start this at my school, those two groups of kids. I've got a little bit of everything and they're working together, redheads helping them out, they love it, they're talking, they're collaborating. Go ahead. Oh, I, I started almost the same way. I found out about the Hour of Code. I used to do, um, programming back when we had Texas Instruments, which dates myself a bit here, um, where you had to save what you wrote onto a cassette recorder. Um, so I always had an interest in it, um, but then, you know, life catches up with you, and, and but then I heard about the Hour of Code, and I'm like, hmm, this could be interesting, you know, if I can get the Angry Birds or the Pig, you know, it's not going to be too difficult. So uh, my school, um, I have 650 students, I did it pre-K through fifth. Um, so I made sure every student at least had a little bit of exposure to it. So we participated in the Hour of Code last year. And as soon as we get back, we'll be starting the Hour of Code again. <laughs> Oops, we went too Sorry. far. That's okay. Oh, yeah, what happened to my beautiful pictures? Um, we started, um, I started with the Hour of Code that I taught to third and fourth grade because those were the grades that I had in the lab at the time. And then I also did kindergarten with some unplugged lessons from the code.org. And then we began an after school club. Um, my assistant principal came in when we were doing coding for the hour of code. He saw it and he said, we need to get more of this. So we got permission to do an after school club. We set it up. We sent home permission slips with third through fifth grade, thinking, you know, 20 kids are going to sign up between schedules, between mom and dad can't pick me up at the end between I'm not interested, we didn't think we'd get many. We had 130 kids sign up. Wow. I couldn't teach them all. Now we have 600 in 3-5. So that's about, you know, a sixth of the kids. It's not great, but for the school of my size, it was fantastic. So what I did is I took 30 kids to begin with, and then in the spring I enlisted a couple other teachers to help me out, classroom teachers, 
and that way we could get 90 kids that year. I still missed out on 40 kids. So I made sure I got the fifth graders, and then this year I'm catching up all the other kids that I missed. And I'm also including more kids. Um, and now I'm doing enrichment groups. We have an IE time that's 45 minutes a day, uh, intervention and enrichment. And I did a sign-up sheet, and I can't pull them from an intervention, but I can pull them from the on grade level and above groups. So after school, I have a lot of my title kids, special ed, um, ESL kids, and then during the day, I take the enrichment groups. Um, I did third grade for a month, fifth grade for a month, and now I'm doing my fourth graders, and they're missing out today and tomorrow because I'm here, but that's okay. They said it was okay. Um, <laughs> Do you want to talk about your group? Um, sure. Um, um, after uh, Valerie was so successful last year <laughs> in her after school learning club, I asked my administrator if I could, you know, try it out. And I made sure he knew I had no idea what I was doing, but he said, sure, jump in, you know, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> so I sent out um, permission slips or, you know, interest slips to um, our entire fourth and fifth grade. And the first half hour of when they were supposed to come back, I didn't get any. And I'm, I'm texting my husband, like, oh, no, no one's interested. <laughs> um, but by the time I got the slips back, we had 70, uh, 60 students that were interested in coding. Well, it was only me, and I only have 30 computers in my lab, so I can only take the first 30. Um, so I now have uh, a number on, um, on a wait list. So I've had a consistent amount. I have uh, had about 25 students come consistently each week. We do it twice a month. And it's after school from 3.15 to 3 o'clock to 4.30. Um, parents have been very supportive. And I've gotten all levels. I've got the, the gifted students all the way down to the struggling students. Um, and they've all been very successful in doing this. No. So next semester, I plan to be ending in two weeks, and then the next semester, I'm going to take those students that were on the wait list, and I'm going to bring them in so they have an opportunity as well. But now I'm already getting ideas for how am I going to have this run next year. Um, I asked my students, <laughs> our um, network went under a DDoS attack last month, and the only thing that worked, they whitelisted Google accounts so we could get in and check our email and do that. So we got into Google Classroom. So during my coding club, I had my fifth graders respond to some questions through Google Classroom because it's all we had at the time. Which, if yours ever goes down and Google is still allowed, made with code is a great alternative <laughs> for a couple days. So um, madewithcode.com. Mm -hmm. And so they whitelisted Google and PowerSchool and the essentials for our county. Um, so I asked my kids, why did you want to join it? And they basically said, I like computers, I like, like Miss Folly, I like learning things. I heard it was fun last year. Um, and so if you just scroll down, I've got a couple questions, or a couple answers highlighted. Uh, one kid said, computer coding is helping you understand stuff about how a computer works. That's pretty accurate for a 10 year old. Um, what skills do you use? Trying to understand the wrong things placed. One of my big things with coding club which we call it a club, even if it's really a class, because it makes it more exciting to the kids. It's and they, cool. It's cool, it's exclusive, even though it's not. <laughs> <laughs> we take them all. Uh, one of the skills that I really try to focus is you're going to mess up. And oh, I can't remember which presentation I was in this morning, and somebody said they don't like using the word failure because it starts with the big red F. Anybody else in that session? I can't remember who the pres presenter was. And so I talk about, you're not gonna get it right the first time. You're gonna have to try it again. Just like your math test, you might get a 75, and you're gonna have to go home and figure out what you missed so that you can do it again. What happens when you can't solve the puzzle? I let them go to the next question, but I make them go back. And we'll show you in a minute how you can tell when they go to the next question. And they like certain things. Um, Code.org's curriculum is fantastic because it keeps them really interested. They have Angry Bird levels, they have Lappy Bird levels, they have uh, Plants versus Zombies, and then the Bumblebee, which they didn't care too much about the Bumblebee, because it's not anything they knew about. And then they have the artist where they can draw things. Let me scroll down a little bit more. I just like showing my students' perspective. Um, when I code, I use mostly my logic and my brain to work out problems. So O'Leary didn't spell check, but that's okay. <laughs> Keep on going. Um, Alex is a kid. 
he doesn't get challenged in school, and he said, it gives me challenge. I don't like the hard levels, but he did say, it gives me a challenge. He doesn't get challenged during the day. He's an all, a straight A student with no effort. Um, I did way too many than we needed. That's okay. Uh, what do you happens when you can't solve the puzzle? I raise my hand and ask Ms. Folly or figure it out for myself. If there's an error, you can just look for the error and then fix it. Miss Rebecca. That's good. We can go back. So I tried to get my students' perspectives because I thought it was successful. I thought they really enjoyed it, but I wanted a little more you know, empirical data. So we're teaching this. You can just do it from the screen if that's easier. Um, there's a huge gap coming up between the kids prepared for the careers of the future and the actual amount of those careers. The kids aren't gonna be prepared for them. They're, it's gonna be a huge gap between computer science students and the, the jobs that are out there. Uh, it teaches a ton of problem solving, like those kids said. They have to figure it out. They have to solve their problems, fix the bugs. There's a lot of math applications. Um, in Scratch, when you score a point, it's a variable. They're solving a variable, or they're creating a variable. And they don't even realize exactly. how much of this they're experiencing, how much of this they're going through. It's not like we're sitting down and saying, okay, here's a math lesson on variables. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, they go through the process of, of the coding and, and they use Scratch, and they don't even realize. And so when it comes up in a, like a real world application or they're in their math class, they're like, oh, okay, well that makes sense, because they need that <coughs> Scratch. I taught my kids angles because in the artist you have to draw things and you have to turn a certain amount of, ang of degrees. So I taught them angles and then I heard them in the hallway. The teacher said, okay, turn around. And the whole line had to turn around. And they said, you mean do a 180. Mm. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> Go ahead. Anything on communication? Well, they, they're actually learning to communicate with each other when they don't know what a certain level is. They have to, I, if I, um, when we do the hour of code in my classroom, it's kind of like an open classroom where if they have issues or they have questions, they can go to a neighbor and talk to them or if they find something really exciting, oh my gosh, we just looked at this. They can go share that with the neighbor as long as it's you know, I don't get too too loud or the administrator doesn't want um, But they, they're learning to talk, you know, if they don't understand what's going on, they have to come up with the terminology to be able to tell their classmate, okay, here's what I'm having trouble with. So they're learning to, to ask questions, they're learning to communicate with each other, and they're picking up the vocabulary that goes along with coding. Go ahead to the next slide. Next steps. I hate, the, oh good, they did show up. They didn't show up in the preview. Um, our next steps, which we're working on currently, um, I'm starting to get really big into the programmable robots. We have a B-Bot which was my best purchase at ISTE. The guy was closing up shop and he said, I'll sell it half price and I took it. Uh, we're getting dash and dot. Probot is a part of Bbot. Can you go to the last tab? I don't know if you've seen dash and dot. These are my obsession. I got, oh, that's not the right site. Wonder Workshop. Wonder. Yeah, or makewonder.com, sorry. Dash and dot are robots. <coughs> that program on an Android or an Apple device. Maybe it won't load, but that's okay. And the kids can um, do all kinds <coughs> of adaptations to it. They have Lego ad adapters. They can put a smartphone on it. They can put, I call it a, a cattle prod. I forget what they call it. But <laughs> it can corral things. It can pick things up and push them around. I think we call it a sweeper. I call it a cattle prod <laughs> growing up on a farm. Um, I don't think that's the right website. What am I doing wrong? That's okay. We'll, we'll get to it later. We're waiting for that to load. Um, I'm out of my lab during the, you guys have heard of something, what was it, SOLs? <laughs> so when we have SOLs in the spring, I'm out of my lab, and it's kind of hard to teach technology when you're just walking around the cart. So I made it a, an a point to sorry. my administrator as he's hiring me that when I'm out of my lab for the SOLs of the iPads, we have a set of iPads default to me. So I have to sign them out, they're just, they're in the state and she gets them for these three weeks. 
So I have put, because the hour code was so successful, and whenever they have so extra time so in our class, which is not very I'll often, the um, they will find something to code. But on the iPad, there are a number of apps that you can use. Um, a lot of them are free, um, where you can code. And we use, so we use the iPads during those three weeks, and they spend the whole time coding. And they just, and it gives them like that brain break. They think it's a brain break, but actually they're using their brains almost as much. We'll come back to this at the end. The network's obviously very <laughs> limiting at times. Um, Hummingbird, which was just in here, and I know a few of you stayed from the previous session to this one, uh, and Lego Robotics. So I've got uh, Dash and Dot on the way. I've got 12 robots coming. I ordered six sets, and they come two in a set. And I wish they were going to be here, but it was a pre-order. It started on Kickstarter. It finally got opened up to the public. You had to pre-order. And they won't be shipping until December 15th. We kind of went out of order. That's OK. Um, our model started with an after school program, and now we're doing enrichment groups. And if you'll go to the Scratch Studio tab. Thank you, our lovely assistant, Denise. <laughs> I'm just dipping my toe in it. My groups won't start till January for COVID. <clears throat> She's learning from our failures. <laughs> and their successes. Um, in the winter last year, we used Scratch. Um, Code.org didn't have their full-blown curriculum, and so I started with Scratch. Scratch is really great. They've got a ton of resources out there. But I'm not sure beyond below third grade how applicable it'll be. So I've moved a little bit more towards Code.org for my younger kids. Older kids are still using some Scratch. I don't know if any of these will load, but the, this is our studio. This is what all my kids have made. It's a huge studio. Some of the ones at the top are remixes. Once they found out they could remix, they could take somebody else's project and play with it and tweak it. It was hard to get them away from that, but that's okay. Um, can you? Yeah. They have a code junior, but it's only an app. Yes. Can you try Coding Club? Um, I was actually asked to present this to our um, school board a couple months ago. And so Ella made this just for that presentation, but I don't know if it's going to connect quickly enough. We'll have to save that for the end, too. That's okay. Oh, here's my dash and dot. Can you scroll down? There's a little streaming video that plays. Aren't they cute? I'm so excited for my kindergartners. This is going to be my first in kindergarten lesson plan for about three months. Just, we're just going to do everything we can with Dash and Dot. That's okay. We don't have to watch the video. And she's inspired me to write a grant to get these for yes. my school. And I think the website that finally worked is makewonder.com. Sorry to make you hop back and forth. Go. Yeah, go ahead back. You got to do this. Hmm. So these are, I mean, we're kind of going out of order. Um, but these are a couple of pictures of my students. Um, this is our first uh, meeting with our, uh, with our coding club. And they're just, they were really excited. They had their headphones on because there, there was audio with it. Um, they were just really excited to be there. They were able to create their own accounts. Our fourth on up, but our, so our fourth and fifth graders have Google accounts. So they use their Google accounts to create accounts um, with code.org. And I can, and from the teacher dashboard, you can see where their progress is, which I think is the next. Next two slides. slides. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, yes, we'll definitely get into that. All right, when you log into, uh, when you create an account on code.org, this is your teacher dashboard. And you can see that there's, you know, you've got your lesson plans and resources. Something great about the lesson plans is they have unplugged activities. So if you have internet issues, <laughs> or, or your students aren't quite getting it, or you're introducing it, they have activities that you can do that don't require any sort of technology. And it's also, it's giving them the same exposure to it as well, because it's the solutions um, that they can use. So they have like a, a lot of resources here. They have, um, actually we went to a professional development here um, in Richmond a couple of weeks ago, which 
has potential to be a great professional development. We'll just leave it and at that. What is, what is that? This one? No, I mean, the whole. Oh, this is code.org when okay. you create a teacher account. And it's the easiest thing. You just enter your kids' names. They want to know the age and the gender, but I think you don't have to fill that out. No, and that's um, just for statistics. And again, with the lesson plans, the mm -hmm. unplugged lessons, when I got kicked out of my lab for the lovely SOLs for a month, I took the unplugged lesson and used those in the classrooms when I had to push in. Mm -hmm. And you can see your own course pro uh, progress to see how well you've been doing. You can show your students, or you can, if you have questions, because there are a couple of levels that I was getting tripped up on. Wait, how do you do this? And so I, would, so I would go to the student accounts and their progress, see who's gone through it, and ask them to come help me. Um, but if you want to go to the next slide. Okay, so this is what the, the student um, progress looks like. You can see these are, my, these are my actual students. You can see the different levels of progress that they've made. And the one, this one, uh, Zoe's almost off the board. She's almost finished uh, with everything. So I'll be uh, sending her to do other coding and going out two more sessions but so you can see you know you know you can look back here okay well what's what's Abby why is she only here when she's had the same amount of time as you know Daniel has so you can go I can go watch with her and see if she's understanding it I can pair up with somebody to see if maybe they could help her out um, but it's, it's a great way to see where they are in the process and then code also at the very end of the levels has what they call a play lab which looks like Scratch, where you can put in characters and it's animated and it's cute and it's so much fun. And my kids try to, like if I had Daniel, he would jump way ahead over there to try to get to that level, just to play and have fun. And so I can go directly to my monitor, pull it up on my phone and say, all right, Daniel, play there for two more minutes and then we're going back to your lesson because you're not quite ready. You know, it, it is sequential, it does build on itself. So they do need to I'll see where work progressively. Student, exactly. I'll see where a student, he skipped, you know, six levels, and he's like, oh, Miss Dave, I don't understand this. And I'll look up, <laughs> like, well, that's because you skipped six levels. Well, let's go back. You know, give it a try. But then let's go back, and then you'll see how you're learning each of the steps in these six lessons right here. So you'll be able to understand. So he went back. He did all six. He's like, oh, okay. Now I understand why it needs to be sequential. Mm -hmm. Is that why the numbers in the circles are significantly different? It tells you <coughs> level is inside the lines and then they're in level one, two, three, four, stage eight. So it, it's like 10 or 12 stages within each level. Or maybe I have those words flip-flopped. The, 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 the colored in circles Yeah. I'm not sure what the circle color is, but do you notice how this goes to a light green? Yeah. Yeah. The dark green, or the, the, you know, the brighter color, is where they solved it perfectly, or what code.org co code considers perfect. Mm -hmm. And then the lighter green, they solved it, but they could have done it in fewer directions, or they could have solved it more directly. And then white is they skipped it. So maybe this white means that they haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Yeah. You need to click on your teacher home page up there. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Go to student accounts. I never noticed that the numbers are colored in or not colored in. That's a great question. Go back up. I think it popped down. Um, it doesn't matter. Fall Code Club, not March. This is my home page. Uh, what I like to tell the parents and the admin when they ask, uh, all of your kids go to music class in elementary school. All of your kids go to art class. They're not going to become professional musicians. They're not going to become professional artists. All of my kids are being exposed to coding. They're not all going to become computer scientists. They're not all going to be able to write it well on their own but they've been exposed to it. They know that it's out there. They know there's a potential for careers, for uh, jobs, for earnings. They know it's there and that if they like it, they might continue. Hey, all right, here's Ella. And if you will go to see inside on the top right, because I forget the directions, it's been so long. All right, so when space is pressed, when C, and when you click the sprite, so press, press space. space. 
Yeah, click this one. No, that's too much. Yeah, a green flag. There we go. Y'all see. I see. I know. I forget which one you click. Try clicking one of them. Clicking which one? This one? Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember which one. It's been a while since it I've seen this one. Sprite. What sprite? Which, either what one. Either one. character. There we go. Good night. <laughs> so this was our presentation. It's nothing phenomenal, it, it, but it blew some of our people away because they didn't know our kids were capable of creating something like this that's animated, that looks kind of nice, that's ready to go, and that it's responsive to your directions. Because she put in space, C, and when you click it. And I can never remember Ella's directions. <laughs> all right, leave the one. <laughs> there we go. None of this one's loaded. Now, all right. Tom never showed up. Jason never showed up. But as you go through, you can see that some of my kids started skipping. Um, but we're still working on our way through there. Uh, this one, Mr. AJ loved to go to stage up here and do in the play lab. And so I have to keep going back to him. And, you know, I can't get too mad because they're creating, they're making things, they're having fun, they're enjoying it. And they're still getting something out of it, no matter what level they're on or what they're doing in it, they're still getting something out of it. And sometimes that's inspirational enough for them mm -hmm. to want to wanna learn how to do more. So maybe they'll go back a few stages on their own, learn how to do it. So we're going to show you some of our um, peripherals, as you know. I have Bebot, which I said I bought at ISTE. And it's very simple. The kids love it. I've used it with kindergarten through fifth grade. Fifth graders go crazy for this. Um, it's very simple. You've got directions on the top. You clear the old directions. I want to go forward, forward, right, forward, forward. And hope it doesn't run off. <laughs> nope. Let's go. So, uh, it's going to turn. Now it might run off. You might have to catch it. I forget how many forwards I pressed. And so I've got a big board, it's a six by six grid uh, with my third and fourth graders. I have the answers to multiplication questions. They quiz each other and the partner has to find the answer. You know, it's just another way to practice those facts that they don't have memorized just yet. Yeah, so I put the answers down on the board and they have to program the B-Bot to get to 18. I use it with... I use it with kindergartners, but I make them map it out first. So they say, okay, I have to go forward, forward, find a turn to get somewhere. So what I've done with kindergartners is around Thanksgiving time, I had Thanksgiving uh, riddles. So the pictures were scattered around and they had to solve, here's where your next jack-o'-lantern comes from. And they'd have to go to the pumpkin patch. Kindergarten. They loved it. And now with kindergarten, now that Thanksgiving's over, I moved on to rhyming skills. So I'm going to spread these out on the board, and they have to find the two rhyming words. So if they go to bat first, then next they have to find hat or whatever I printed out. You know, this takes me two minutes to find the clip art pictures, print them, cut them, and we're ready to go. They do have a lot of pre-made boards, yes. but they're rather pricey. And it was basically just a laminated grid sheet. Yeah. So we were like, oh. well, we can make a laminated board and figure out, you know, match your lowercase, your uppercase. And I don't even laminate it. <coughs> I just put these down and it's a cardstock, you know, uh, poster board. Uh, we also made patterns. So I spread these out and they had to make a pattern and then program Bebot to follow their pattern, different colors. Um, beginning with kindergarten. She's just really waiting anxiously for Dash and Dot. <laughs> I can't wait. This is my precursor for it. Do you want to do the iPads? Sure. Show them the apps. Okay. So I'll show you. And we have a couple we can pass around. I couldn't take many from my school, but Kat's going to show it on the projector, and we've got these two minis that we can pass around. 
If this one goes to sleep on you, the passcode is 1555. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. We're a Google school. Yes. So iPads, obviously, is not something. Oh, we are too, but we have iPads. <laughs> well, it's just we want to keep the same platform. Right. So I understand. Is there yeah. something equivalent as far as you can know, use tablets? Or? I don't have any Google, any Android tablets, so I can't answer that very well. Okay. I'm sure there are, but maybe not as many. Okay. okay. Um, I'm the first one to tell my okay. students that I don't necessarily understand or know how to do what they're doing, the coding. But when they're able to figure something out, I always encourage them to come up and teach me how to do it. Show me how you did that. That empowers them and that shows them that you know, not everyone knows everything there possibly is. And that's part of learning, is sharing what you've learned. So one of the um, apps that we worked on over um, our SOL, uh, a couple of weeks was hopscotch. I did this with my fourth and fifth graders. So first I'm going to choose a character, and they add new characters frequently. So we'll do the little girl. So we're going to add a new rule. All right, when the play button is tapped, all I'm doing is dragging it across and dropping it down. Now I'm going to give her an action. What is she going to do when the play button is tapped? Well, let's see. Let's have her jump and then walk. Let's see what we have. Click on edit and you can add things to it. We're going to have her grow by, let's see, 60%. Now let's see what we have. All right, so it looks really simplistic doing it this way, just a little step by step. But I, I have my students um, work step by step so they can see what each, um, what each thing does. And it's not going to load now, but under out of the way. Uh, let's see. Under published and also they have uh, explore. Sometimes they will have um, challenges within the hopscotch community and you can see what that challenge is and then have your students see if they can recreate what that challenge is. Um, I think one of them was actually like making their name, drawing their name or drawing the, the word hopscotch um, and they, they just have, they have a lot of fun with that. Another one for my younger ones is Daisy the Dinosaur. Yes, any K-1 people in here? I do this with uh, first graders yes. for the Hour of Code. Yes. My yes, fourth my and fifth try to work on it, I'm like, no, here. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Yeah. All right, so free play mode. Okay, same, same idea. So we're going to move forward. You can either change it forward or back just by clicking on it. And then we're going to have him, actually, let's be five times to move forward. Play. <laughs> and he moves forward. All right, see here. All right. One of the other ones that they really like. <laughs> They're like, wow, look, and then they'll make it go off the page, or they'll, they'll shrink it, and it'll be so it's tiny, you can't see it, they love doing that. But it's still part of the programming, and they understand that you can have it do different things. And they'll have, like, really long programs, and, like, where they can't even see all the, all the, all the words anymore. And they don't even know, some of them don't even know how to read shrink and grow and jump, but they put it on there, and they push play, and now they understand what it means.
Mr. Scratch Jr., which in all honesty, I have not played with a whole lot. A little bit. Yes, you know. My kids oh, so have. That, I was so you pull it down and add it to and add it to the chain. Sorry, I'm probably blocking the projector. You can add some sound. There's a pop. I don't know if your sound is on. Just see if you can hear. But you have to give it a where is it? A starting command. So either when the flag is pushed, when you touch the sprite, when you um, bump. One cat. I haven't tried that one. So let me try the flag. So if you hit the flag at the top. He moves, he jumps, he spins, he's a slide. He it did pop. It was very hard to hear. <laughs> okay. And they've got a ton of preset backgrounds and characters that you can really get detailed into. My daughter plays basketball, so I can do that. You can add multiple scenes. So he could start out in the basketball court and then go to the park and you can mm -hmm. tell a story. A lot of the apps that we use turn into digital storytelling apps, especially Tinker. My kids, my girls love Tinker. Boys do too. Tinker Box? No, Tinker with a Y. Oh, okay. um, some of but my we love Tinker Box too. Yeah, they. Did you go back to that? Yeah, could you just go back to that? Yeah, yeah. Your, your folder. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Wait, wait, don't And Bebot has his own app. Yes, yes. Do you want me to switch it? See the page. Yeah, there's a second page. So keep the iPads up. There's a second page. <laughs> coding for. Coding for. A uh, code academy. Oh, that's right. Can you go back one more time? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, most of these are free. I don't recall. I might have paid for Codable. No, being free. Codable is free. Or okay. it was. But it it's free is my middle name, being in education. Oh, my. Okay. Yeah, sure. If you're on Twitter, I'm putting the pictures out there right now. Thank you. All right. Um, My students like uh, CargoBot. At times I don't like it because it is challenging. Like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm like, oh, just try it. You'll be all right. <laughs> all right. It's my challenge. So what's our first step going to be? Your toolbox is right here. What's the first thing we're going to put in there? <coughs> so, okay, so we'll put down. All right, what next? Down. Can you play it? Yes, I always encourage my students, if you're not sure, just push play. I mean, we'll see what happens, and then you can debug it if you need to, or you can keep moving on. <coughs> okay, so that's with two down. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that one. So now it's going to go down. All right. All right, think that's it? No. Congratulations. All right, and then it, it goes, obviously, it goes on to harder levels. <coughs> That's a cargo box. And what grade would you say? Um, yeah. It depends on your students. You could have them in first grade. I had first graders working on that. You know, later in the year. I mean, it wasn't you know, second semester. My daughter started using it in first grade. Nice. Was it was it early in the 
first grade or was yeah. it later in the year? Okay. Okay. But she's pretty determined. <laughs> this is, she loves this. It might be too early to ask this question, but you said you were going to be writing a grant to get your class. Yes. Where are you find the kind of grants that maybe you know, We're very fortunate in our county. Um, we have two different types of grants that we can apply for within our county. We had a um, community person pass away that left us a large, substantial amount of money. So we are able to That's apply for grants for that. And last year we started something called the iChip Grant. Instructional and Challenge Innovation Project. Project. And it's only up to $1,000. And then we have to present at the end of the year. Um, through your local businesses? It's also the school system. The school system. Donors choose donors for your grade place. Yes. <laughs> I've got um, some things in my Are you putting on donors sure. choose as an ITRG? Sorry, I didn't hear that. It said you had to be with, you couldn't be a resource teacher. You had to be your coach. Oh, you had to be well, 70. Well, She's yeah, technically yeah. a technology yeah. teacher. Yeah. She has classes. You can see classes. Get, yeah. get a teacher to do all the way up in But donors choose is a great place. Unfortunately, it's not for fun. I will say when we um, attended the code.org thing in Richmond the other weekend, they are working very hard to take their lesson plans and attach them to an SOL. So that when we walk in the classroom and say, hey, try this, as teachers, our time is precious in the classroom. We want to say, and it applies how. <laughs> so code.org is working to apply the Virginia standards to their curriculum that they have. If you sign up on code.org, there's a spot where it says put your email in or you can look by the map of the United States. Theirs was in Richmond. I couldn't make it that day, but they went. And they had in one in Baltimore, yeah. the other two week, a week after that one. Okay. Oh, yes, the foos. This is one that just. Yeah. Code B. Yeah. Yeah. The code.org professional development in, in Virginia are run through Code VA. No space, just Code VA. Code VA. The workshop is, itself was free. Just your time on the side. This one is called the Foos. This one is the Foos. It just came out as an hour of code tutorial, and it's for pre-readers. So I'm really excited about this. I played it for about 20 minutes in our hotel room, and I said, I've got to put it down and walk away. <laughs> it's so cute. All right, so I'm on the way. This is an iPad app. iPad app. Yeah. And I think it's free after. Mm -hmm. All the ones up there, I have like a list on iTunes uh, that has the paid ones, and eventually. Tinker with a Y, you, have, you get one level free and the others are paid. So I just make my kids go to the free level. What's this one called? This is the FOOS, F-O-O-S. So there are no written directions for them to follow, it's just pointing. And it highlights your next move. So I told you to tap the screen and you got the star. It's a little happy dance. That right there is a joke. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I got through 10 to 12. <laughs> yeah, she finds, I read up with this down and get other things. I had to go to dinner. <laughs> Alright, so how many do you think we need? Two. Two? two? Alright, let's try. Alright, guys, it'll happen again. <laughs> you get a new character after about 10 levels. <laughs> Oh, but so you, you get the so once we leave here, because obviously we can't do the hour of code, um, is anybody planning on doing it in their classroom? Or if you're a tech resource like us, you're planning to help others, awesome. Awesome. It just started last year, and they already beat their goal for this year of how many people signed up to participate. Well, their website went down earlier. Yes, yes, I saw that on Twitter. On that I heard. They did. That happened last year too. Wasn't Shenandoah County here? Yeah, we're all here. Sure. All right. Does anybody want to try any of the hacks? This is 